大家好，欢迎你回到 C H I 一一三的频道。今天我们要学完第二课。第二课说什么？好的，跟我说，家庭，家庭。Hey everybody, this is Gao Lao Shi, and welcome back to these pre-class videos. Today we're going to finish up with Lesson Two, Dialogue Two. At the conclusion of this video, you should be able to accomplish the following learning objectives. Number one, you should be able to understand and be able to pronounce using the correct tones all of the assigned vocab words from Lesson Two, Dialogue Two. Number two, you should be able to read and fully comprehend the dialogue. Number three. You should have a basic understanding of the dialogue's main grammar points, and there are two that we will be focusing on here in this video. And finally, you should be able to read and write all of the characters from Lesson Two, Dialogue Two, for next class's in-class quiz. 准备好了吗？好的，我们开始吧。Let's begin preparing for the next class by first listening to the audio of our new vocab words from Lesson Two, Dialogue Two. Feel free to follow along in your textbook on page fifty-nine. Ten. 做 To do. Eleven. 工作 Job. To work. Twelve. 律师 Lawyer. Thirteen. 英文 English. Language. Fourteen. 都 Both. All. Fifteen. 大学生 College student. 大学 University. College. Sixteen. 医生 Doctor. Physician. And the proper noun from this lesson is "bai ying ai." Bai ying ai, which is a personal name. Please go back now and listen to this audio at least three more times, repeating out loud what you hear. Now that we've listened to the audio of our new vocab words, it's time to listen to the audio of the textbook dialogue. And again, if you want to follow along in your own textbook, please turn to page fifty-six. Lesson two, dialogue two, asking about someone's family. Bai Ying Ai, 你家有几口人？我家有六口人。我爸爸。我妈妈，一个哥哥，两个妹妹，和我。李友，你家有几口人？我家有五口人。爸爸，妈妈，大姐，二姐，和我。你爸爸妈妈做什么工作？我爸爸是律师，妈妈是英文老师，哥哥、妹妹都是大学生。我妈妈也是老师，我爸爸。Please go back and listen to this audio at least two more times, making sure you can fully comprehend what both speakers are saying. For additional practice with our new vocab words from Lesson Two, Dialogue Two, don't forget to check out Quizlet. Just scan the QR code here on your screen, or click on the link below in the description section of this video. So this is this is a very common way to ask about someone's profession. So you could simply say, as it's as it's stated here on the top of the slide, 他做什么工作 
a very common way to ask about someone's profession. And so if somebody said that, right, what does he or she do? 他做什么工作? You could respond to that question by saying 他是, and then whatever their occupation is. And so here, if they were a college student like yourself, you could say 他是大学生. It's important to remember, though, that you never use this verb 做 to answer the question. It's used in the question itself, but it's never used to answer the question. Instead, the verb 是 is going to be used. Another common way you'll hear people ask about someone's profession, and this isn't included in the textbook, is this one down below here. So sometimes people will say, 他是做什么的? 他是做什么的? Same meaning. What does he or she do? Let's practice. 他做什么工作? 他做 什么工作? You could say, 他是老师, right? He is a teacher. 他是老师. 他呢? 他做什么工作? 他做什么工作? You could say, 他是学生. Or, if you wanted to say she was a college student, you could say, 她是 大学生. We would simply add the character 大 in front of 学生 right here. Tana You could say, 她是 Lu She is a lawyer. Tana Tatsuo Shama Gong Zuo You could say Ta Shi Yi Shang Ta Shi Yi Shang Right She is a doctor So here's a common error I sometimes see with this grammar pattern. Let's say somebody asked, 他做什么工作? You should say, 他是老师, right? He is a teacher. But what about this one? 对不对? 他做老师? Exactly. 不对. You would never say this in response to a question about someone's profession. Instead, the verb you want to use in response to someone's profession is always going to be this verb here, 是. Let's go on now and look at the final grammar point that we'll be focusing on for next class session. And that is the adverb, do, which here is marked on your screen with the number 7. So, buying I, she says, 我爸爸是律师, 妈妈是英文老师, 哥哥,妹妹,都是大学生. Let's look a bit closer at this grammar point. So the adverb do means both and all. And so what it means is it just indicates that all the preceding subjects, however many subjects that come before it, they're all included. And because do is an adverb, it's always placed before the verb. So whenever you have an adverb, you can always remember this rule. It always comes before the verb. 好,我们来练习. Let's practice. 我们来练习。中文怎么说? My mom and dad are both Doctors. Zhong Wen You could say Wa Mama Baba Do Shi Yisheng. So notice how the adverb Do is coming before the verb Shi Yisheng. My mom and dad both are doctors, quite literally. How Zhong Wen We are all college students. Wa Men. 都是大学生。我们都是大学生. So again, 都, the adverb, comes before the verb 是 in this sentence. Let's look at one more example. 中文怎么说? Both Liu and Wang Peng have a younger sister. 
Now here, hopefully you realize the verb will not be shi. Instead, the verb's going to be yo. But again, since do is an adverb, it doesn't matter what the verb is. It always comes before it. So we would say li yo he wang peng do yo yi ge mei mei. And again, here's your measure word. Don't forget, if you have a quantity of an object, we need a measure word after the number. Now let's look at how you would do a partial negation and a full negation using the adverb do. So here on the left hand side of your screen, we've got a partial negation. And on the right hand side of your screen, we've got a complete negation. One method I like to use for myself that helps me kind of differentiate between these two is that if you translate them literally, it'll help. So if you look at the partial negation here on the left hand side of your screen, which is bu do, it means not all, literally, not all. If you go to the right hand side of your screen, which is the complete negation, do bu, it means all are not. So hopefully that'll help you as it, as it does with me. So let's look at the basic structure for a partial negation. Here again, you're going to have your subject followed by the bu do, which is then followed by the verb. So again, do is an adverb. It's coming before the verb. Let's practice. Zhong wen zeme shuo. Not all of us are teachers. We could say, wo men bu do shi lao shi. Wo men bu do shi lao shi. So maybe one of us is a teacher, but the other people are not teachers. So we're not all teachers, is what we're saying here. What about this? Zhong wen zeme shuo. Not all of us are Chinese. So maybe one of us is Chinese, or two of us, or three of us, but not everybody is Chinese. We could say, Wo men bu do shi zhong guo ren. Wo men bu do shi zhong guo ren. So that's the partial negation. Let's now look at the complete negation. And here, you're going to have the bu following the do. Let's practice. Zhong wen zeme shuo. None of them are students. Zhong wen zeme shuo. None of them are students. You would say, Ta men do bu shi xue sheng. So literally, they all are not students. Ta men do bu shi xue sheng. Let's try one more. Zhong wen zeme shuo. None of us are American. You could say, Wo men do bu shi mei guo ren. Wo men do bu shi mei guo ren. Let's look at this partial negation a little bit more. And look at this image here on the right hand side of your screen. And if I asked you, Ta men do shi xue sheng ma? How would you respond to that question? Are they both students? Ta men do shi xue sheng ma? Well, we know we have one student here, but the other person seems to be a teacher. So we would use the partial negation sentence structure. And we would say, Ta men bu do shi xue sheng. Ta men bu do shi xue sheng. Right? Not all of them are students. So here, don't forget our rule with the verb yo, is that in order to negate it, we're going to use mei. Let's look at an, ex an, at an example here. So if I asked you, ge ge he di di do you hai zi ma? Ge ge he di di do you hai zi ma? And look at this chart over here on the bottom right hand corner of your slide. We see that ge ge has liang ge hai zi, right? He's got two. Di di na? Didi mei yo hai zi, right? So Gurga has two children. Didi has no children. So we would use the partial negation here. And the verb wouldn't be shi. It would be yo to possess. So how do you think we would answer this question? We could say, Ta men bu do yo hai zi. Ta men bu do yo hai zi. Right? Not all of them have children. Let's get a little bit more practice with the complete negation sentence pattern here. And so let's use this image in the bottom right hand side of your of your slide to answer these questions. Ta men do shi xue sheng ma? 
Tamen do shi, shue sheng ma. And so we know they're not all students. We know none of them are students, actually. So we could say, Tamen do bu shi, shue sheng. None of them are students. Hao, what about this one? Tamen do shi, nan yi sheng ma. Tamen do shi, nan yi sheng ma. This nan yi sheng means male doctor. Tamen do shi, nan yi sheng ma. We would respond with a partial negation. Tamen bu do shi, nan yi sheng. Right? Not all of them are male doctors. We only have one male doctor, in fact. So let's bring this all together and get a little bit more practice using both the partial negation or the complete negation to answer the following questions about Family Guy. And you can reference the image in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. So the first question, 他们都是中国人吗? 他们都是中国人吗? And we know none of them are Chinese, so we would use the complete negation. We would say, 他们都不是 中国人, and we could also add, 他们都是美国人, they are all American. 好, what about number two? 他们都有中文名字吗? 他们都有中文名字吗? 中文 means, as you know, Chinese, 名字 means name. So, do they all have a Chinese name? None of them do. So here we want to use the complete negation pattern. We would say, 他们都没有中文名字. And then finally, what about this question? 他们都是学生吗? 他们都是学生吗? Well, we know some of them are students, but not all of them. So this seems to be a partial negation sentence. We would say, 他们不都是学生. Not all of them are students. 他们不都是学生. So the do, meaning all, it's the inclusive marker, and also the partial negation pattern and the complete negation pattern can get a little bit confusing. So we will get a lot of practice in class using these. And I would suggest going back over these slides to make sure that you completely understand how to use this very, very important adverb, do. And I'd also strongly encourage you to reference your textbook, pages 61 to 62, which has excellent explanations and examples of how do is used in everyday sentences. So now that you've listened to the audio several times, you know how to pronounce the vocab words for next class's session, you have a basic understanding of the dialogue and a basic understanding of the two main grammar points, it's now time to start practice writing characters. And again, I'd encourage you to use the grid paper that you can find in Canvas if you click on Modules. You'll be able to download that onto your iPad or even just to print it off. It's a very effective way to practice writing characters. So our first character that you'll be responsible for for the next class session is Zuo. Zuo, meaning to do. Gong zuo is our second one. Gong zuo meaning job or to work. Number three, lü shi, lü shi, meaning lawyer. Number four, ying wen, ying wen, meaning English, the English language. Number six, do, do, meaning both or all. And I'm sorry, that should be number five. Number six, da xue sheng, da xue sheng, meaning college student. Number seven, da xue, da xue meaning college. And don't forget with that X, it can be very difficult to pronounce, but you'll be able to pronounce it correctly if your tongue is touching the back of your bottom teeth. Da xue. And the final vocab word. Yi sheng. Yi sheng. 
meaning doctor. I'm sure most of you have probably heard of this app or you've heard me mention it in class multiple times. It's called Pleco. And I think this app is perhaps the most important one you could have on your smartphone. It is the ultimate app for Chinese learning. It's got a very, very comprehensive dictionary with lots of examples on how to use certain words. And for some characters, it'll even tell you the correct stroke order. You can look up a word by either typing it in in Chinese characters or typing in the pinyin or typing in its English meaning or even using the handwriting input that you have on your phone. The dictionary and stroke order function are entirely free. They do have a few add-on features that are relatively cheap, but you are not required to purchase any of these for this class. Just an FYI though, I do find their flashcard system to be very, very useful. I think I paid about $5 for it, and it's a one-time fee that you pay. It's a way for me to record all the new vocab words I come into contact with on a daily basis. So if you don't have this app, Pleco, on your phone, I would suggest downloading it as soon as possible. To download it, just scan the QR code on your screen or click on the link in the description section of this video. And once you feel comfortable with the vocab words, characters, and grammar points from Lesson 2, Dialogue 2, please don't forget to take the Lesson 2, Dialogue 2, Part 2 pre-class practice quiz in Canvas before our next class session. 好的,下次见,再见! <laughs>